Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. My name is John Kinesny, and I'm a member of the Visioning Leadership Team, and I'm a member of First Church Williamsport. I'm proud to say that my hometown is the birthplace of the Susquehanna Conference back in 2010. Two years old, I'm a new grandfather, and raising my son two years old was known as the terrible twos. Right now, as a grandfather, I'm looking at it as a terrific twos. And I think, hopefully, you will look at us as a conference being in our terrific twos. We, the members of this great conference, now have an opportunity to celebrate our birthday, but more importantly, to take the next steps, the next steps that the future God has planned for us. In the next few minutes, Mike Biala and I will set before you a structure framework upon which the Visioning Leadership Team and the Cabinet believe it will help us accomplish our mission, our vision, and our goals in the evolving Susquehanna Conference. Thanks, John. The next steps that we're about to take have not come without much listening, holy conferencing, prayer, discernment, and collaboration. Since we began this visioning, envisioning process to, to vision what it would mean to reform our conference, long before its birth, we have resisted the very strong temptation to do what most of us would be tempted to do, and that was put in place a structure and then begin to do our work. But we resisted it with your help. And we were keenly aware at the time that any structure that exists simply to organize an institution will quickly become the driving force of that institution rather than a supportive foundation. You might remember a video clip that I starred in. I'm, you know, I try to be humble, but a few years ago when I talked about the process of building a home and how that is similar to what we anticipated it would be like to build a new conference, conference from the ground up. Uh, here's a short clip of that. I thought it was a challenge to build a large house from the ground up. But you know what? Building a conference from the ground up was even harder. You still need a clear vision. You've seen that in the vision document. And you need a strong foundation upon which to build. We used Isaiah 43 as our foundational scripture. And a clear understanding of your desired outcome <coughs> the product. We want to make disciples for Jesus Christ, for the transformation of the world. When you have all that clear, then you can begin to form a supporting structure that will help make the vision possible. An effective structure is one that helps enable the conference to live out its mission and vision. When a structure becomes the focus instead of a supportive means to mission, it becomes a constraint to our work. Thanks, Mike. By the way, that hard hat that you had, that's really cool, but why did last night you gave me a hard hat that had a big bullseye on the top of it? Was you? <laughs> oh, okay. Friends, today when you came in, you probably found on your seat this uh, brochure, this folder here. And what we're hoping is that this will become a reference point for you to take back to your church and share with them. We're hoping that with this folder, you come to understand, and everyone comes to understand, who we are, whose we are, and why we exist as a conference. The first page of that report explains the unique mission of our annual conference which is quite different from that of the local church. As you know, the local church's mission is the making of disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. As adopted by this body at its birth, and as expressed in our Book of Discipline, the mission of the annual conference is, one, to train and deploy quality, transformational clergy and lay leadership to lead the disciple-making task. We were reminded of that last night 
and this morning when we walked in, that we are the equipment. Second, the conference is to equip our local churches with effective tools and the best practices for disciple-making in the 21st century and the reformation of the church. And third, the conference is to provide a covenantal connection for the mission and ministry beyond the local church. So once we had a clear understanding of what our mission was, we thank Bishop Lori this morning for making that point a focus, where we headed, knowing what we're about. Once we had that clear understanding of our mission as a conference, the vision that emerged in hand in hand with Isaiah 43 sounded something like this. A people alive in mission and ministry as God leads us on a Christ-centered journey of faith. The next thing we did was to massage those 12 core values that you so strongly affirmed a year ago. Remember, it was all those things that we held so important to us as a a new conference and as a body of Christ. And we massaged those in such a way that we could make them easy for all of us to understand and and to, to, if folks would say, well, what are we all about? We could could just pour it out there. And so what we came up with was this. We value being unbound, outbound, and Christ-bound. That's not the first time you heard it today. We hope it's not the first time we hear it for many years to come. If you turn to page two in your folder, with our mission, our vision, and our core values in hand, three ministry goals surface for the next quadrennium. Develop new places for new people. Strengthen, enhance, and continued development of vital congregation and transformational leaders. And third, to rediscover our connectionalism for the 21st century. Which brings us now to the structure, that next step that we need to take. Now, remember something. The old structure worked well for many, many years when our goal was, when our mission was, to make members. We were tooled for that. But now we want to make disciples. And so the next adaptive question becomes for us, given the mission, the vision, and our goals, what kind of underpinning, what kind of framework, what kind of structure do we need to help us attain those goals that we're setting forth. Now, I think what happened before was the next clip of that same wonderful actor got mixed into the first clip because I was only allowed 10 seconds per clip, and I think that one was 20 seconds. Do we have that other clip again? An effective structure is one that helps enable the conference to live out its mission and vision. When a structure becomes the focus instead of a supportive means to mission, it becomes a constraint to our work. We've now actually seen that three times, Mike, just for the record. <laughs> and, it, and it will be available on live streaming again later when you get back to your room. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, if there had been a sequel to that great film, the star might have added this. To be effective, the structure must be flexible, permission-giving, and risk-taking in nature. And then it would have added this, too. It has to align everything that we do, every entity, all of our resources, all of our energies around the goals and the overall mission of the Church of Jesus Christ. And that's what we're trying to do as we take this next step forward. Since our birth two years ago, we've been moving to align ourselves with our conference mission of leader development and resourcing of local churches. Your actions during our last two conferences, two annual conferences, have adopted bold steps towards realizing our conference goals. As a body, we adopted the vision team report, which was our first step toward on our journey. 
we voted to realign our districts and in so doing refocus the primary role of the district superintendents to enable their greater participation in leader development and district empowerment. We established the position of Director of Congregational Development so as to intentionally develop new places for new people and help vitalize, re revitalize existing congregations. The deployment of the Connectional Ministries ETORs over the last two years reached over 1,000 members, leaders, and disciples who came out and were significantly impressed, I hope, by the variety of resources and tools to help local churches do their disciple-making work within their communities. We have also refocused the website around the theme of equip, empower, engage, and connect. And as you scroll through those pages, you will see those kinds of tools, resources, practical ideas, best practices to help make that happen. And we've made a commitment over the next few months and year to add to that list lots of training videos, short clips, but training videos that can help give you the ideas and the tools so that you have the best possible chance of training and enrichment of future disciples. With the adoption of this new structure framework, we will take another step forward along our journey. In this new way of being conference, we realize that our work of asking questions about effectiveness and evaluating our outcomes means the structure should never, never be finished, but rather continue to be adapted to as our needs and our goals change. We strongly believe that the rearrangement of our structure into ministry teams as presented in this report, along with the redeployment of our staff to work alongside the teams and the oversight of the visioning leadership team as to our vision and the cabinet as to direction will significantly improve our efforts of making disciples for the transformation of the world. And we admit there will be some successes and there may be some failures along the way because we're moving into a new mission field of people who are yet to know Christ and communities who need Christ's presence. We're going to celebrate the successes when they happen and we're going to learn from the mistakes, but we will not give up and give in to the pressures or the negativity we encounter in this culture around us and sometimes, sadly, even within. Finally, please understand that this structural framework is not simply a reshuffling of the deck chairs. It's going to require of those on those ministry teams to discern God's continued leading in each area of mission and ministry. We're going to provide training for all the team members over the next six months in adaptive models of thinking and leadership. It's not so much about particular ministries doing their own thing. That's that nasty thing we call siloing, where everybody goes out and does their own thing. We don't really know what the other folks are doing. But rather, we want a collaborative focus effort around ministry goals we share in common for the sake of Christ's kingdom. How's it going to work? Well, what we're hoping is that the new structure would become effective January 1 in 2013. Until that time, those who are nominated for the existing structure would continue to do their work as they have been until, uh, until January 1, 2013. We've made a commitment to continue to fund those ministries that are effective, that have, that have been already planning ahead of time. We'll continue to do that through this transitional period. Now, pending the acceptance of this report today, the bishop will name chairs of the new ministry teams. And we're asking each of you to prayerfully consider and recommend possible team members 
and to place their names on this sheet that we provided that the tellers had placed on your chairs, I believe, when you came in. It's entitled, Do You Know Someone with the Gifts That We Need? We're looking for people, again, not so much in a specific committee or, or uh, individual ministry, but someone, for instance, who has a passion for disciple-making, someone who has a passion for leadership development. And, and those are the kind of folks we're looking at. And we figure if you all gave us one or two names out of your own parish, we'd have a pretty good pool to draw from. You know who those people are. At the close of the report, we'll take those suggestions and we'll begin to use those and to move forward uh, as others are appointed to those teams. Finally, I just want to remind us where this whole journey began. It began with these words that, again, you've already heard today, but I invite you, rather than to, to hear them, to join us and say them. These important words that launched the birth of this conference from Isaiah 43rd chapter. Here they are on the screen from the message. Let's say them together. But now, now God's, God's message, message, the God who made you in the first place, place Jacob, the, the one who got, got you started, Israel, don't, don't be afraid, I have redeemed you. I've called you by name, you're mine. When you're open over your head, I'll be there with you. And when you're in rough waters, you will not go down. When you're between the rock and the hard place, it won't be a dead end. Because I am God, your personal God, the Holy of Israel, your Savior. Forget about what's happened. Don't keep going over history. Be alert. Be, be present. present. It's, it's about, about doing something, something brand new. new. It's and it's bursting, bursting out. out. Don't, Don't you see, see it? it? Oh, amen. And amen.